Hi, welcome. When we talk about chess, we talk about arts, sports, competition, creativity. We talk about strategies. And this is, these are some of the reasons that I love this game. Why is that? Simple. If you're in a good shape and if you're with the correct mindset, on a good day, you will be able to do a great game with a great precision, doing tactical moves, playing correctly the positions. And yes, it's possible to do a game that will be immortalized for uh, hundreds of years. And in my opinion, the game that I will show today is one of these masterpieces. This is the masterpiece of the beast, Adiban. Adiban has this nickname. That's the reason I'm calling him a beast. So Adiban has played against Eduardo Iturrizaga. He is another very strong player and uh, is another beast, but not with that nickname. And uh, they have made such a strong game that their precisions are very, very, very high. This game has been played at the Grand Suisse on Is Isle of Man, that is decorating right now. And uh, Adibon will make on the game three brilliant moves. So we will see this right now. And yes, you will want to see until the end because this will make you stronger. So let's jump to our game first we will talk a little bit about both players and of course let's start by uh white and adiban uh, in right now has 25 49 of rating but this guy yeah he dropped a little bit his rating on the last years because he in uh, 20 2019 uh, he had 2701. He was literally one of the best players in the world. Uh, but he dropped. I don't know why. Uh, this guy is, uh, has this name, nickname of Beast because he is very aggressive. So he is um, one of a kind. Because normally with this, I, um, I guess, um, those IS uh, uh, rating players, they normally aren't so aggressive. So for this reason, Adibon is one of my um, favorite players because he has a style that, in my opinion, is uh, interesting to see. When you see Adibon playing, you know that the game will be very interesting. So about his results, he uh, has been world champion uh, of under 16. And I think he already won um, Indian championship. So he has married uh, on 2021. I've uh, found this uh, on the X uh, platform on Chess Base India. So <laughs> it's interesting, a uh, cultural thing. It's different from Portugal, for example. And uh, about his opponent, well, uh, Eduardo Iturrizaga. So uh, this guy has a very interesting um, history. And Iturrizaga is uh, born in uh, Venezuela. And uh, right now he's Spanish, so he competed for Venezuela for several years. He has played on the Olympic Games. Uh, he is the first player of the Venezuela to reach the title of Grandmaster. And um, he has been Venezuelan uh, champion several times. And right now, I think uh, since 2021, he uh, arrived to Spain, he lives at Spain, and he is Spanish champion too, so he played a lot. Uh, about his rating, his peak, uh, I think, was on uh, 2673. Right now, he uh, has a higher rating uh, than Adibon, but it doesn't matter because Adibon plays more than the rating that he has. I, I don't know why he has this rating. I, if you know, please tell me on the comments because I don't know. I, I've been searching on the, the internet and I, I don't understand, serious, because I think this guy plays 
much more than the rating that he has so okay let's jump to our video but before that we need to talk about this why don't you like me almost 87 percent of the viewers isn't subscribed and i need your help now it's simple it's free you just need to click on the red button and did you know that google has a new animation when you click on the subscribe it will happen something I think they have a new animation, so yeah, don't you want to see the animation? <laughs> so, of course, if you subscribe, you will be helping a lot this channel to grow and you will be helping me to continue doing what I'm doing right now. I'm producing one long form content every day and a short one too. On the short ones, we talk a little bit about tricks and tactical moves and on the long form content, we do analysis, we see uh, openings, end games, everything. We are working everything. If you see every day the long form content, I guarantee that you will raise a lot your rating and more important than that, your level. So don't forget, subscribe please and push the like button because this helps a lot with the algorithm any question any suggestion please talk with me chess.com dark attack or uh by the comments so let's go to our game and uh, well this game is completely incredible so playing with white we have bashkaran adibon 2551 with black eduardo e turrizaga 2621 two monsters playing each other and Adibon, he, I love this guy. This guy is so strong. So this has been played at Fried Grand Suisse on Isle of Man. And uh, okay, let's jump to our game. And of course, this started with E4 because yeah, attack, uh, attacking player needs to play this stuff. And after the Sicilian, he will continue with the open lines. So I knight F3. Here, black has continued with the can variations uh, for, for now so e6 and after d4 pawn takes knight takes this will continue with a6 a6 it's considered the cut so after bishop d3 this is already interesting but it's theory uh black will play bishop c5 and after knight goes to b3 here interesting approach here uh black will continue with bishop to e7 uh why is that because bishop a7 uh, the idea would be to continue with queen e2 uh playing the pieces to the center it, yeah you don't have any problem at all to play bishop to a7 but yeah this guy is a strong grandmaster, so probably he knows better than me what he is doing. So he played bishop to e7, and after knight to c3, this will continue with d6. So let's advance a few moves. Here, of course, f4 is too um, interesting because uh, what is the idea? When you're an attacking player, you want to uh, play asymmetric pos positions. And when you play asymmetric positions you will guarantee that uh, the game is complicated and the complicated games will um, will be more dynamic games with uh, more tactical moves and uh, the positional players will suffer a little bit because they want quiet moves and uh, attacking player wants abstract games so here this continued with knight c6 and after bishop e3 this will continue with b5 whoa my god let's start with the party the idea is quite simple black wants to attack on the queen side and one, uh, white wants to attack on the king side but well, if you were playing with white what would you do in my case probably i would play a3 i like to attack but no i would never castle queen side here uh this is the best move according to the computers uh, and yes Adibon has played that uh, it's incredible <laughs> this guy isn't afraid of nothing uh so 
Here, black has continued with knight c7. Uh, it's a normal move because uh, it wants to put the queen on the open file to try, try to start creating problems on the queen side. So this continued with king to b1. And after rook to b8, uh, here white will continue with g4. And uh, I love the, the mindset of the white player because after g4, h6, he will continue with h4. And let's go, let's go, let's attack like uh, it doesn't exist tomorrow. So here, uh, of course, it's too complicated to castle queen's, uh, king side for black. And the thing is that queen side isn't possible because the rook has already been uh, played. So this continued with h5. And here, just to have an idea, h5 is the best move. Because, in my opinion, the idea of the white player uh, would be to advance. And after pawn takes, pawn takes, white would have two pawns against one on the king side. So this asymmetry would uh, be favorable for white because white would be able to pass the h pawn and it would be. Uh, uh, exterior past pawn so when he plays h5 this is so correct that makes me uh, it's, it's impressive because uh, here of course pawn will advance and after knight plays to g4 according to the computers this position is completely equal i don't know how, how it's possible because when i look to this position i say it is better white needs to be better but no, this position is completely equal. And here, uh, Adibon will make, uh, in my opinion, it, this isn't a brilliant move. But for me, it's brilliant. According to the computer, no. But it's brilliant. Why is that? Well, when we play chess, we are playing against humans and not against computers. And in this position, you need to think always chess when you play chess you need to think always uh, about what is the best way of creating problems to your opponents and let's see how can we complicate this position Adiban has played this move this is great because the idea is to break the pawn structure and after that, of course, if black plays, this will be too complicated after pawn advances, bishop takes it. It's too, too, too complicated. So here, the computers say that it's possible to castle king side, but a normal per person wouldn't do that. And of course, uh, Iturizaga hasn't done that. So Iturizaga has advanced the pawns. What is the, um, the logic of this move? After pawn takes, the king will go to f8, and uh, the king is protected by the opponent's pawn. Of course, white is winning by one point, but black has counterplay. And the idea is to create counterplay on the queen side. So this continued with knight to a4, because you don't want to, uh, to lose material. And after e5 here bishop to c4 to guarantee that the pawn will not fall this continues with bishop to d7 and now we have the first brilliant moment if you want you can uh, think a little bit uh, you should think a little bit you should you should think a lot about this position because here adibon will make the first brilliant move but to see this brilliant move, you need to see the next move that is brilliant too. So, it's incredible this game. So, here, Bashkaran Adibon has played. It's incredible. Knight to c5. In knight c5, it's impressive because here black needs to take because for example let's see what can i do uh if uh, bishop goes to c8 for example uh here this would win for white with knight to e6 after bishop takes of course it's uh, necessary uh 
bishop takes. This will continue with bishop takes. And this position is too strong for white. Why is that? Because, for example, after knight takes bishop, I think it's a normal move. Here, queen will take. And this is very uh, strong for white. Because I'm uh, creating problems in all of the central squares. So, for example, a5 and here can take if knight takes needs to be done because of this black will play knights to d4 and will enter on all the problems of the black's game so this is too complicated so for this reason after knight plays to c5 black needs to take and now if you found the first move i have another question for you where is the second one can you find the second? Yeah. After giving up a knight, you're giving up the quality. I don't know how it's possible to be so creative on a chess game, but yes, Adibon is this kind of player. So this is uh, completely inc incredible. What, what, why is this incredible? Simple. Because queen needs to take. And after knight takes, no, it's necessary to take because uh, this sacrifice removes the bishop and the bishop is defending the square on e6. So after rook takes, queen takes, now I'm threatening to enter with the knight, winning a lot of material. So for this reason, bishop needs to take. And after bishop check, the knight will go to e7. So this continues with rook to d1. It makes sense because I'm uh, putting the rook on the, the open file. I'm attacking the queen. Important. I have the initiative. And here black goes to c6 and black is threatening to win material. So this continues with queen to d3. And the question that Adimon is, is doing is, do you want to take my bishop? The question is, nope. Because this gives... Checkmate. So this wouldn't be good for um, for black. So here, uh, Iturizaga has played g5. In uh, here we have one interesting uh, detail, because g5 is the only move that guarantees equality for black. Yes, this position is equal. I don't know how it's possible, but it's equal. And for example, if you played here g6. Queen d8 would win the game. Why is that? Because rook, rook, and after king plays here, we have rook takes, and the detail is that, of course, if king takes, I promote, and if the king doesn't take, for example, uh, what will I do? Nothing. Nothing. Because the pawn is on the square that I want to put the knight. For this reason, the only move needs to be g5 because after queen, rook, rook, here he has knight to g6. And the position is still playable, but of course, very difficult for black. So this continued with rook check. And after king, of course, here uh, I think uh, they will repeat some some moves, but bec because of the time control. Because probably I don't know how was the time control, but probably Adibon was with uh, a few minutes or something like that, and he needed to win a time. So here he will repeat after queen takes, and the idea is that Black is threatening to give checkmate, and uh, Black is winning still by two points. So here check. Check, check, probably to win temp, uh, tempos. Uh, sorry, uh, time. I was talking in Portuguese, sorry. And uh, after that, now uh, you have another brilliant move. We've already saw two brilliant moves. Now, can you find the third trillion, uh, trillion, brilliant move? Please put on pause. It's very important to practice your creativity your uh, everything. This is a masterpiece. This is perfect to this game. So here, Adiban will make this move. 
<laughs> because after that, check, 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 check. Here, he, here he's the brilliant move. And why is that brilliant? Simple. If the king takes rook, of course, I'm going to take the queen and the game is completely won. And the alternative is just to take. It's necessary. After rook check, pawn promotes, takes, takes, and this possession is already won for white. But black will try to complicate. So after pawn takes, I'm threatening to promote this pawn. And here, white needs to play carefully. So even if, if this is important, uh, important for you, even an attacking player, a tactical player, needs to know how to play endgames. I love to attack. I love to finish my games on the, end, uh, on the middle game. But I need to practice my endgames because if I fail my moves or if the game is close and we are still playing uh, equal positions, I will need to win on the end game or try to draw if the game is worse. So for this reason, here Adibon will show how it's possible to win this game with time. So this continued with pawn advances, the most precise way of continuing this position. And after king plays to g6, pawn advances again. What is the idea? Very simple. After king plays here, uh, sorry, after uh, king plays here, we have the idea of rook h8. Very interesting because after king takes, the pawn will promote just to show, and this wins for white. So, for this reason, black continued with knight to f6. And after that, of course, c4. Because if I have passed pawns, let's go, let's advance with all the passed pawns. So, this continued with pawn advances. And after that, uh, the game is almost finishing. He will play rook to g8, check. And of course, the knight doesn't want to take because uh, pawn takes promotes so here it's necessary to take the pawn and after that to rook attacks pawn wins uh here interesting is that black has continued with uh, knight takes pawn why is that because if he tried to advance the pawn here of course rook h3 wins um without uh, problems because after knight plays to g4 here, I can continue advancing my pawns on the queen side. So this position is completely won for uh, Adibon. So instead of that, uh, he continued with knight takes e4. And what is Eduardo Iturizaga trying to do? Simple. Uh, if he takes, it's complicated, it's impossible. But if he takes all of the three pawns, uh, and he reaches a uh, position of king and knight uh, against king and rook, yes, the position will be equal and will be completely playable because knight against rook on this kind of position, the game is draw. But um, the thing is that it's complicated because, of course, white won't, uh, wants to, to, to exchange material. So here, rook has taken and after king, here, of course, Adibon will continue advancing the pawn. This game will finish in a very interesting way. And I have another exercise for you. This is the last one of this game. You're a good player. You're improving a lot because I know you're seeing the content of this channel. And if you see the content of this, this channel, you're a beast like uh, Adibon because you know gambits, you love to attack, you love to do sacrifices and um, you, when you will promote, you do all their promotions just because of the style. So you're that kind of player. But how can you win this quickly? That's the question. How can you win this position quickly? And the winner is, the answer is... <laughs> Rook takes. Of course, you need to calculate a lot to know that this wins for white. But the idea is that after king takes, this is the continuation of the game. Advance, 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 advances. And after the promotion, we have queen check. It's over. 
of course, here Itu Rizaga has resigned because he doesn't have nothing. After the king goes somewhere, the queen will take the queen and the game is completely won for Adiman. So, impressive game by Adiman. This is one of my favorite games. Uh, for me, this is uh, at the same level than the Opera's game of Paul Morphy. I'm serious. I, I love this game because of the sacrifices, because of the defenses of the, um, that Iturizaga has found. G5, it's amazing, G5. And uh, because of the end game, so this is so complete, this game. Now we need to see what was the precision. In, my, uh, in your opinion, what do you think? What was the precision of this game? Well, let's see. Here, review, let's see what chess.com says. Oof, my God. 95.8 for Adiban with three brilliant moves about um, Iturizaga, 92.1. So, we are talking about one very, very, very good game. So, at, uh, uh, about the precisions, 2,900 against 2,700. Openings at 98.1, 97.1. Uh, middle game, 89 against 93. So Iturizaga played better the middle game. Look at the end game. 99.3. 90, I'm, I'm going to repeat. Repeat. 99.3. Adibon played an end, a perfect end game. And um, about his opening opponents, 86.1. Uh, and finally, talking about the brilliant moves. Do you want to do one brilliant move in your games? Adiban does three. First one, knight to c5. Second one, rook takes two. <laughs> and finally, third brilliant move, bishop takes on b4. So, incredible. Adiban, I hope you raise your rating until 2800, at least 2700. Please do that for me. You need to raise this rating because you have a level to do that. So Adibon is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best Indian players. And um, I don't know why he, he dropped uh, so much his rating, but... Yeah, this is his quality. So he has potential and level to play such uh, higher than the rating that he has. That's, uh, I don't know, uh, I, want, I want to see more material of him. And um, if you know the reason, please tell me something on the comments, okay? So I hope for today it's uh, all. No, it, it, this isn't true. Uh, in 10 hours, we will uh, be doing another video. So um, I hope you enjoyed. And um, don't forget, I need your help. Please like, subscribe, notifications, everything. And any question, any suggestion, please talk with me. Tell me something. So by chess.com, dark underline attack, and uh, or about uh, you can talk with me on the comments below. I answer always uh, to the comments. So um, I hope you have a great weekend. And um, I'll we say in Portuguese, até já. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>